Hello, I am Thomas Eliason and I'm about to show you a basic tutorial on how to build a computer without using a case. Before we start, be sure you have all the right parts and that they're compatible with each other. For this tutorial, you will need a motherboard, a power supply, a processor and cooling system, some RAM, a DVD drive, a hard drive, a floppy drive, and Windows XP. You will also need a keyboard, mouse, and monitor. Before working on computer hardware, always test the power supply to release any static electricity because it can ruin the computer. The first step is to place the processor in its socket and put the heat sink and fan on top. Before you put the heat sink on, be sure to put some thermal compound on the bottom. Next, locate where the power supply plugs into on the motherboard. There are two locations as shown in the pictures. Now is the time to plug in the drives. In this tutorial, I will be using IDE cables for my drives. Start by locating where the IDE connectors are on the motherboard. Then use the motherboard manual to locate IDE connectors 1 and 2. You will be connecting the hard drive to IDE 1 and the DVD drive to IDE 2. Use a 80 conductor cable for the hard drive and a 40 conductor cable for the DVD drive. Be sure to have the red stripe on the cable go to pin 1 of the connector. You can tell the difference between the two cables because the 80 conductor cable will have more wires with the same amount of pins as the 40 conductor cable. Now is the time to connect the cables. Also connect the 34 pin floppy drive cable to the remaining IDE cable connector. Now connect all the IDE cables to the back of the drive they're supposed to be connected to. Remember the red stripe still goes to pin 1. Also connect the correct power cord from the power supply to the back of the drives. You can stack the drives on top of each other, but be sure to place something that's not metal in between them. After all the drives are installed, it's time to install the RAM. Locate where the RAM goes and simply push it directly down into the slots. Then lock them in place with the tabs on both ends. After that, plug in the speakers, mouse, monitor, and keyboard. Now it's the time to turn on the computer. Be sure that your power supply is plugged in and the switch in the back is on. To turn on your computer, look in your motherboard manual and see where the power switch is on the motherboard. And then get something metal, such as a car key, and touch the switch to turn on the computer. As the computer is turning on, hit the delete key several times to go into the BIOS. Once in BIOS, use the arrow keys to go down to where it says Advanced BIOS Features and hit Enter. Then in the Advanced BIOS Features, go to where it says First Boot Device and change it to CD-ROM, and have the second boot device be the hard drive and the third boot device be the floppy drive. Once you're done with that, put the Windows XP CD in the CD-ROM, then save and exit BIOS by pressing F10. Your computer should then boot to the CD. Now follow the instructions the computer gives you to install Windows XP. After a successful installation of Windows XP, insert the driver CD that came with the motherboard and install all the drivers. Once all the drivers are installed, restart the computer. After that, right-click on My Computer and go to Properties. In Properties, click on the Hardware tab on the top and then click on Device Manager. In Device Manager, make sure that your system recognizes all the devices and that there are no yellow question marks next to any of the devices. If there are yellow question marks, you may have to search for the driver of that device on the internet. After that, you're done building your open computer with no case. Thank you for watching.